What's up everyone, James Murphy here from mCoding, back again to tell you about another quirk of the Python language. Today, we're talking about AND and OR. You might not know, but AND and OR are not actually Boolean functions in Python. If I print out for instance, zero or empty list or empty dictionary, what do you think it should print? Well, you might think false, but actually, we see that it prints out the empty dictionary. Why is that? Let's take a look at another example. Print zero or one or two. In this case, it prints one. So what's going on here? Certainly, in the first case, the empty dictionary is a falsy value, and in the second case, one is a truthy value. So it makes sense because we thought that the first one should be false and the second one should be true. But why did it pick one? How come the second one didn't print two or just the true uh, object in Python? In Python, the same thing goes with. Um, and. So if we say print 1 and 2 and 3, or print 1 and 0 and empty list, we see that these also don't print true or false, but they're printing out one of the values. So which one is it? The way that this is determined in Python is basically by going through the items one at a time and returning the last one that you've seen at the time that you can finally decide what the value should be. So that was a lot of words, but let's take a look uh, at these one at a time. So in this first example, I say zero or something. Well, I can't tell um, after just seeing zero whether it should be true or false. So I go to the next one. Then I see empty list. I can't tell because the next one might be true. So I go to the next one, and then I see the empty dictionary. But there's no more ors. So I say, OK, that with the last one, it should be a false thing. And the last thing I've seen is the empty dictionary. With the next example, we see 0 again. I can't decide. Then I get to 1. And I say, OK, 1 is a truthy value. I can decide. So I return that value. With ands, when I see a truthy value, I have to keep going. So I see 1, I have to go to the next one. I see 2, I have to go to the next one. I see 3, I would go to the next one, but there aren't any more. So I return 3. And finally, with the last one, 1, I have to go to the next one. 0, OK, 0 is a falsy value. So I stop there and return 0. So this might seem a little bit confusing. Why not just have these return true and false? Uh, but this actually allows for a pretty common pattern in Python that you might see when using default arguments. So let's suppose that we have a function that does something. And it takes an argument that has uh, an optional parameter. In this case, it's pretty common to see something like the following at the beginning. You'll see arg equals arg or some default. Let's just make it an empty list here. Now, there are some reasons why you wouldn't want to put just the default up here. For instance, if this is a list, then if I put the list up here, it would actually be shared. Um, every, every time anyone uses this function, it would be using the same list. So for something like that, where I have a mutable argument, it does often make sense to put the default value not in where you might expect to the default argument. But in this case, we'll say, OK, if they passed in something, then go ahead and use that. Otherwise, use the default. Of course, you should look out for something here, which I actually talked about in a previous video, which is that this is not actually checking if they passed in something. 
This is just checking whether this value is true, or truthy rather. So if the user wanted to pass in their own empty list for some reason, then uh, this wouldn't work. This would still be using this list. So that's just something to think about. And I hope you learned a little bit more about how the Python language works because of this. So just to recap, the rule here for all four cases is go through the expression and return the, the thing that you last saw at the time when you can decide what the value of, or what the truthiness of the statement should be. So with ORs, that means returning either the first true thing or the last false thing. And with ANDs, that means returning either the first false thing or the last true thing. All right, there you have it. Thanks for watching. And if you like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.